Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, one Husky. Gold, gold discovered in Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Ever seen a Yukon trapper's cabin, gold mining camp, basket-type dog sled and team of huskies? You'll see what they all look like when you get the sensational new cutout models to build Sergeant Preston's famous Yukon Trail in your home. In a few minutes, hear details of this thrilling offer made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Shot from gun. Sergeant Preston was trailing a dangerous outlaw named Bat Nelson. Two days' travel north of Selkirk, the sergeant halted his team at a small cabin in the wilderness. Looking, how are you, Huskies? Hold on. The owner of the cabin, a gnarled old trapper called Gabby Garland, came out to greet his visitor. Well, my juniper, if it ain't Sergeant Preston. Hello there, Gabby. Look how King's wagging his tail. He still remembers his old pal Gabby, don't you, boy? <laughs> well, it sure is good to see the both of you. Looks like this is your day for visitors, Gabby. Or is that your own team hitched up over there? Oh, no, that belongs to a fella named Ike Foss. He's inside right now drinking a cup of coffee. Come on in, I'll fix you one, too. All right. On, King. As Sergeant Preston entered the cabin, he saw a rough-looking man seated at the table. He was wearing an unbuttoned red and black Mackinaw, and a wool cap was pushed back off his forehead. Oh, Ike, this is Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted. Uh, howdy, Sarge. Glad to know you. Ike's a neighbor of mine. He and his partner have a cabin about five miles northeast of here, over by Thunder Pass. You're trappers, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. We had a claim up at the Klondike, but it played out, so we came down here... While Ike was speaking, the great dog, King, had advanced cautiously toward a black cat which was curled up by the stove. At King's approach, the cat got to its feet and arched its back. Now, Matilde, don't you start spitting at King. He ain't gonna hurt you. You ought to know that by now. Just the same, she'll feel more comfortable if King keeps his distance. Come on, fella, back here. Take off your parker, Sergeant. Well, thanks, Gabby, but I can't stay long, I... May as well keep it on. Well, anyway, sit down and make yourself comfortable. I'll get you some coffee. All right. Are uh, you here for some special reason, Sergeant, or are you just making a regular patrol? What makes you ask that? Oh, I, I don't know. Just curious, that's all. As a matter of fact, I'm looking for an outlaw called Bat Nelson. Bat Nelson? Say, from what I hear, that critter's the meanest, toughest killer in the whole Yukon territory. He's a nasty customer, no doubt about that, Gabby. Uh, Here's your coffee, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Have either of you seen any strangers around here recently? Not me. Shucks, you and I here are the first human beings I've seen the last three weeks. <laughs> Same here. I ain't seen any strangers either. Uh, why? Do you figure this guy, Bat Nelson, might be hiding out around here somewhere? Could be. Pulled a hold up near Selkirk two days ago. After that, he headed north. I have an idea he's on his way to Dawson. Is that where you're heading when you leave here? Well, it depends. First, I'm going to scout around a bit, see if I can pick up his trail. Well, I... Sure As I fine. got up from the table, the black cat arose from her place by the stove and stretched luxuriously. Then she started across the room. Are you leaving, Ike? Yeah, yeah, I gotta hit the trail. So long, Gabby. So long, Sarge. Bye. 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 Ike didn't notice the black cat passing directly in front of him. As he headed toward the door, he stumbled over the cat and nearly fell. Ike gave an angry bellow and launched a vicious kick at the cat. You black pest! 
Hold it, King. Back away. Right, Frost. You ought to be ashamed of yourself kicking a poor little critter like that. Yeah? Well, I don't like black cats walking across my path. Especially when they trip me up and nearly make me break my neck. You kick an animal like that again, and someone will break your neck. Ah, oh, hooey. Good riddance. Yeah, come here, Matilda. Go, Gabby, see if you're all right. Yeah, that's my old girl. Now let me see. I guess he didn't hurt you none. You and that cat couldn't get along without each other, Gabby. <laughs> that's right, Sergeant. Things are getting mighty lonesome around here without Matilda. But I reckon I won't have to worry about getting lonesome from now on. Oh, what do you mean? In another week or so, Sergeant, I'm leaving here. I'm going back to the States so I can be near my daughter. Oh, well, I'll bet you're happy about that. I sure am. Addie's been wanting me to come down and live with her and her husband for a long time. She claims I'm too old to be roughing it up here in the wilderness all by myself. Can you imagine that? Seems to me you've made out all right. Of course I have. That's what I always told her every time she'd write me a letter nagging me to leave the Yukon. Not that I wasn't hankering to see her again. What finally made you decide to go back to the States? Well, it's like this, Sergeant. Ida, she married a society doctor, and I reckon she's kind of ashamed of having an old backwoodsman like me for a pa. And I figured if I ever went to live with her and her husband, she'd make me spruce up and toe the mark and... <laughs> uh, shuck, Sergeant... She might even wind up by putting me in an old folks' home. You're probably doing her an injustice. Well, maybe. Just the same, I don't like being dependent on anyone, not even my own daughter. So I figured I'd wait till I made a big enough pile to support myself in comfort. Well, now you're all set, that <laughs> it? <laughs> That's right. I've taken nigh on to $15,000 worth of gold dust out of my claim. You can see it right up there on the shelf, stored away in the moose-hide pokes. And what's more... I got a bunch of fur pelts that ought to bring me another five or six thousand. I'm glad you've made out so well, Gabby. I'm also glad you're taking that gold dust away from here so soon. It's risky keeping that much gold on hand in a lonesome spot like this. When Ike Foss returned to his own cabin, two men were waiting for him. One was his partner, Smokey Adams. The other was Bat Nelson, the outlaw Sergeant Preston was looking for. Bat Nelson spoke. Well, what'd you find out? You're right, Bat. Sergeant Preston is right on your tail. In fact, I just talked to him about an hour ago. <laughs> you talked to him? Where about you? Over at Gabby Garland's cabin. Gabby's an old trapper. Lives about five miles from here. Holy smoke. That's too close for comfort. I better pull my freight. Preston figures you're heading for Dawson. He's right, too. Did he uh, tell you what he was aiming to do? Yeah. He said he was going to scout around a while and see if he couldn't pick up your trail. Well, that'll give me time to get a head start on him. Well, maybe you won't be so anxious to shove off when I tell you what else I found out. What do you mean? Gabby Garland has 15,000 bucks worth of gold dust stored away in his cabin. Huh? And he's also got a nice big pile of valuable pelts. Stuff like silver fox and lynx and wolverine. What do you got in mind? What do you think? <laughs> hey, now, listen, Ike. You're figuring on robbing the old guy, ain't so sure I like the idea. Don't forget, we came out here to lie low after all those jobs we pulled in Dawson. Oh, quit acting like an old woman, Smokey. Gabby Garland lives all alone, and we're his closest neighbors. It'll be a cinch to rob him and get away with it. Well, what about Preston? You think it's safe to rob the old guy with a mounty in the neighborhood? Sure it's safe. Preston's got his hands full looking for Bat. Besides, he's already stopped at Gabby's cabin once got no reason to go back that way. You are sure this guy, Garland, has that much gold in his cabin? Sure, I'm sure. He was blabbing his mouth off to me about how he's made enough to go back and live with his daughter in the States. Uh -huh. He told me all about the gold and the furs, too. And what's more, I saw the pokes of gold dust all lined up on the shelf. Well, how about it, Pat? Do you want to help us pull the job? It's kind of risky hanging around with Preston so hard after me. What I guess maybe I'll take a chance. What time do you figure on pulling the robbery? Well, you better wait till tonight. All right. Count me in. That night, the three crooks halted their teams at a safe distance from Gabby Garland's cabin. Then they crept up to the door of the cabin and prepared to enter. The bad there ain't no windows in this shack, so we can take a look inside. Yeah, you must be asleep by this time. You got your gun already, are you? Yeah, right here in my hand. You know right where Gabby's bunk is located? Yeah. All right. As soon as I open the door, you sneak over to his bunk and wrap him on the head. 
If he uh, wakes up before you get a chance to slug him, just let him have it. <laughs> Remember, dead men tell no tale. <laughs> yeah, I said. All set. All set. Ike stepped inside the cabin and tiptoed toward Gabby's bunk. The room was pitch dark. Ike bent over the bunk and put out his hand to locate the old man's sleeping form. But instead of a blanket-covered figure, his hand came in contact with the sleek fur of Matilda the cat. With a frightened snarl, the cat leaped straight up at Ike. With his left hand, Ike grabbed at the squirming cat. Sharp claws raked his cheek. Enraged, Ike flung the cat to the floor. The noise had awakened Gabby. Uh, what's going on here? We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, fellas and girls, you've never seen cutout models like these. No, sir. The new cutout models you can now get to build Sergeant Preston's famous Yukon Trail in your home are amazingly different. They're larger, easier to put together. They show you exactly what you're hearing about on these stories. Yes, with these models, you can follow each day's story as Sergeant Preston and King hit the Yukon Trail in hot pursuit of Bat Nelson the meanest, toughest criminal in the whole Yukon Territory. You get models of Sergeant Preston's dog sled and team of huskies. Yes, there's sleds and teams you can hitch up and move around. You get a model of the trapper's cabin where Gabby Garland's just been robbed and his cat clawed the thief. You get the Klondike Mountain where Gabby staked his claim. The silver fox, lynx, and wolverine, animals that Gabby traps for their pelts. And the Klondike forest where they roam. Yes, even scenery. And listen, these thrilling, different Yukon Trail models don't cost a single extra penny. Fifty-nine larger, easier-to-build models come on eight different special new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The famous cereals shot from guns. The king-size cereals that give you extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So right away, the minute you get the big red and blue packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, you can start to build your Yukon Trail. Every package is clearly numbered on the front. Remember, models of Gabby's Cabin, the Klondike Mountain and Forest, Gabby's Gold Claim, and Fur-Bearing Animals of the Yukon are all on number five package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So hurry and get yours. There's nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. Your grocer now has these Yukon Trail cutout models. They're on eight different new packages. These swell models come only with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Act fast. Follow the stories from today on with these Yukon Trail models. Now to continue. After leaving Gabby's cabin, Sergeant Preston spent the day combing the countryside in a vain effort to pick up Bat Nelson's trail. Late that night, he arrived at a roadhouse on the Yukon Trail. He questioned the owner and showed him a police handbill bearing a picture and description of the escaped outlaw. But the roadhouse owner shook his head. Oh, I'm sure he hasn't showed up around here, Sergeant. Well, Warren, I'll post this handbill on the wall. If anyone thinks they've seen him, send word to the mounted police immediately. Please. Sure, I'll do that. Thanks. Uh, by the way, Sergeant, I've got a couple of guests here with a problem. Huh? What do you mean? Well, there's a man and his wife from the States just arrived here about an hour ago. They're looking for an old trapper named uh, Gabby Garland. Oh. Maybe you know him. Oh, yes, I do. Well, Gabby always picked up his mail here at the roadhouse, so naturally this is where they came. Now they're trying to figure out some way of getting out to his cabin. Don't they have a dog team? No, they run up here from Skagway, the freight outfit. But the freighter's going out to Dawson, so the couple's stranded. So where are they now? They're out in the other room, just finishing dinner. How about talking to them? All right. A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston met the couple. The man introduced himself. Uh, I'm Dr. Wayne Lowell, and uh, this is my wife. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. How do you do, Sergeant? I understand you're looking for Gabby Garland. No, that's right, Sergeant. My wife is Mr. Garland's daughter. I thought so. He's told me about you both. Have you seen Dad recently? Yes, I saw him this morning. Tell me, how is he? 
Well, you looked all right to me. Oh, I'm so glad. Dad's a terrible worry to me. I've written him time and again, asking him to come down to the States and live with us. But he's so stubborn, he simply will not listen to reason. Your father's a proud man, Mrs. Lowell. Has it occurred to you that he might not want to be dependent on you and your husband? Oh, but that's ridiculous. Is it? Of course it is. Dad's far too old to be living up here in the wilderness all by himself. He needs someone to take care of him. That's why Wayne and I finally decided to come up here and make him come back with us. Well, you don't need to worry, as it happens. He's already made up his mind to go back to the States. Oh, that's wonderful news. Well, now all we have to do is find some way to get out to his cabin. Suppose I take you there tomorrow morning. We'll be awfully grateful. Well, we certainly will. Needless to say, we'll pay you for your trouble. Well, that won't be necessary, thanks. Early the following morning, Sergeant Preston set out from the roadhouse with Dr. and Mrs. Lowell. Two hours later, they arrived at Gabby Garland's cabin. He's not here. He's probably out tending his traps. We may as well go inside and wait. Mrs. Lowell entered first. She saw Gabby, his head and shoulders drooping limply over the side of the bunk. Dad! Ida, what's wrong? Someone's killed him. There's blood Steady, all over. Steady, Mrs. Lowell. He may not be dead. Hey, let me feel his pulse. Still beating. Let's take a look at the wound. Oh. Hmm. Wayne. Wayne, how is he? I'm afraid he's in pretty bad shape. Oh, no. The wound was so serious that Dr. Lowell didn't dare try to remove the bullet without proper surgical equipment. However, using the sergeant's first aid materials, he applied a temporary dressing and made Gabby as comfortable as possible. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston had been looking around the cabin. He returned to the bunk as the old trapper began to regain consciousness. Oh, my chest. He's coming to. Gabby's eyes flickered open, and as the room came slowly into focus, he saw his daughter and his son-in-law staring down at him. Heidi. Doc. Dad. Where in thunder did you two come from? We came up from the States to visit you. Sergeant Preston brought us out from the roadhouse. When we came in the cabin, we found you lying here on the bunk, wounded. Gabby, in turn, explained how he had been shot during the night by unknown intruders. And then, suddenly, the old man gave a gasp of alarm. <laughs> Sergeant. Those pole cats stealing my gold dust? I'm afraid they did, Gabby. What about my furs? They're gone, too. <laughs> Other words, I'm cleaned out. Don't worry, Dad. What difference does it make? From now on, you're going to live with us down in the States. No, Idy. It's no go. <laughs> I don't aim to be a burden to anyone. But, Dad, you're no burden. Now, look, Gabby, the situation may not be as bad as it seems. Maybe we can catch the thieves and get your gold back. Uh... Did you get a look at any of them before you were shot? Uh, no, Sergeant. It was too dark. I ain't even sure how many there was. Well, how'd you happen to wake up and discover them? I ain't sure of that either. But the way I remember it, <laughs> seems like one of them let out a yell. Let out a yell? That's right. I think it was the one who shot me. I reckon Matilde must have scratched him or something. Oh? Because when I woke up, she was yowling and he was trying to tear her loose from his coat. <laughs> Say... Where is Matilde? Curled up by the stove. Would you like to see her? I sure would, Sergeant. The sergeant went over to the stove and picked up the cat. He carried her back to the old man. Here's your sidekick, Gabby. Yeah, good old Matilde. Yeah. You really lit into that crook last night, didn't you? Wait a minute. What's the matter? There's a strand of red wool caught in one of her claws. Red wool? I don't savvy. I'm wondering if it came off the gunman's coat. Say, that's an idea. But what good will that do us? That visitor of yours yesterday was wearing a red and black mackinaw. You mean maybe Ike Foss was the one who shot me? Just a hunch, but it's worth investigating. Oh, Doctor, you're going to move Gabby before you extract the bullet? Oh, it's out of the question, Sergeant. I'll have to operate right here. Without instruments? Well, there's a complete surgical kit in my <laughs> luggage. I left it back at the roadhouse. <laughs> Will you go and get it, Sergeant? Well, of course. I'll start immediately. Sergeant Preston drove back to the roadhouse at top speed and then returned to Gabby's cabin with the instruments. Later, when Dr. Lowell had finished the operation and Gabby lay unconscious under the anesthetic, the sergeant spoke. What are his chances, Doctor? Well, he's an old man, Sergeant, and as you know, he's suffered a bad psychological blow in being robbed of everything he'd worked for. I'd say he has a fighting chance, that's about all. How long before you'll know? Probably not for several hours. In that case, I'm going to leave you folks here and pay a visit to Ike Foss and his partner. 
Ike Foss and Smokey Adams were seated in their cabin when they heard a dog team approaching. Hey, someone's coming. I better go see who it is. Yeah. Holy smoke. What's wrong? Like that Mountie Sergeant Preston. Preston? What's he coming here for? How should I know you, Jughead? I thought he'd be miles away by this time. Maybe he's found the old guy's body. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Hey, what are you getting that gun for? I'm going to fix me up a little ace in the hole, just in case he makes trouble. Ike jammed the gun into one pocket of his Mackinac, which was hanging on the wall. A moment later, Sergeant Preston knocked on the door. Well, howdy, Sarge. What brings you this way? I'd like to ask a few questions. Mind if I come in? Why, no. Come on in. Thanks. Come on, King. King was at his master's heels as the sergeant entered the cabin. Here's my partner, Smokey Adams. Glad to know you. Same here. Quite a scratch you've got on your face, Ike. How'd it happen? Why, uh, I scratched myself on some underbrush when I was out tending my traps yesterday. Oh. The sergeant glanced around the cabin. Neither Ike nor Smokey was armed, but several gun belts were hanging in plain sight on the rear wall. Then the sergeant's eyes fell on a large pile of furs. Did you trap all those yourself? Sure. What do you think? Ignoring the question, the Mountie walked over to Ike's red and black Mackinac. Hey, what are you doing with that Mackinac? Pulling off a strand of wool. What for? I want to compare it with another strand of wool I have in my pocket. Well, apparently they match up. Hey, what in thunder are you driving at? Gabby Garland was shot and robbed last night. His cat clawed one of the robbers, and this strand of wool I brought with me was caught on one of the cat's claws. Hey, you ain't trying to pin the job on me, are you? That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Now listen, Preston. I'm telling you I don't know nothing about it. If you're innocent, you won't mind if I search the cabin. Suppose I do mind. Suppose I search it anyway. Watch them, King. The two crooks stood by sullenly as Preston began making a thorough search of the cabin. It wasn't long before he found even more than he had expected. In a half-empty crate of canned food, under a pile of supplies, he discovered not only Gabby's pokes of gold dust, but also a large sum of currency, the loot from previous robberies which the crooks had committed in Dawson. Well, well. I suppose this is your own gold dust and your own money, too. Sure it is. I told you we had a claim up on the Klondike. Stop bluffing, Ike. I'll get the truth sooner or later. i am already told you the truth. We'll see about that. Sergeant Preston carried the stolen loot over to the table, and then he said, We're going to Gabby's place and see if he can identify these pokes and the furs. If he does, you're both going to jail. All right, get ready to travel. Poker-faced, Ike turned and walked over to get his Mackinac. As he took it down off the wall, one hand slid into the pocket and closed on the handle of the hidden revolver. He started to turn, intending to fire through the coat. But at that moment, a sudden suspicion dawned in Preston's mind. Don't move, Ike. Oh, no! <laughs> Preston's bullet had slammed Ike back against the wall, causing the crook's shot to go wild. As Ike slumped to the floor, Smokey hurled himself at the sergeant. I'll fix you, Preston! The sergeant was knocked over sideways by Smokey's attack. He had fired from the hip, and now his gun hand was pinned underneath him. King was already charging to his master's aid when he saw that Ike was painfully maneuvering for another shot at the sergeant. <laughs> Meanwhile, Preston had wrenched his right arm free and was hammering Smokey into submission with short, savage blows. Oh, oh. Oh, Preston, don't hit me again. Stand up and don't try anything. Sure, sure. Oh, help me, Preston. For the love of my, get him away. Keep your hands away from that gun and you'll be all right. Keeping Smokey covered, the sergeant walked over and picked up Ike's revolver. All right, King. Take it easy now, boy. Well, I don't savvy as how you knew Ike had that gun there. For well, one thing, you were acting as though you expected something to happen. For another thing, I remembered how worried I got when I went over to examine his Mackinac. Realizing that the game was up, both crooks made a full confession, including the fact that Bat Nelson had taken part in the crime. Where's Nelson now? He took his cut in folding money and lit out for Dawson. He won't stay free much longer. In the meantime, you two are under arrest in the name of the Queen. The sergeant bandaged Ike's wound and allowed him to ride the sled, while Smokey jogged alongside under the watchful eyes of King and the sergeant. When they arrived back at Gabby Garland's cabin, Sergeant Preston learned that Gabby had regained consciousness and now seemed to be out of danger. Frankly, it's a miracle the way he rallied after the operation. 
But for his age, he certainly has a rugged constitution. What do you mean, for my age? By Juniper Doc, I got more life in me right now than half of you city slickers have at 21. Uh, I guess maybe you're right at that. Yes, yeah, sir, and don't you and Idy go forgetting it either. Well, now that you've uh, found his gold and his fur, Sergeant, I foresee a speedy recovery. Well, I certainly hope so, Doctor. You still planning to go back to the States, Gabby? Well, maybe I am and maybe I ain't. Oh, Father, you've got to come. We'll be mighty disappointed if you don't. And so will the two boys we just adopted. Huh? What's that? We were going to keep it a secret. They're what? counting on us bringing back a new grandfather to teach them all about hunting and trapping. Well, what do you know about that? Of course I'll go back with you. Sergeant, I sure do thank you for getting back my gold and my fur. No need to thank me, Gabby. Frankly, King and I are beginning to feel very much embarrassed. What do you mean, Sergeant? Once again, Matt Nelson has slipped through our fingers. It's a mounted policeman's duty to get his man, and if King and I don't get Nelson soon, it'll be a serious reflection on the force. Well, you'll get him eventually, Sergeant. I'm downright sure of that. Thanks, Gabby. In the meantime, as far as Ike Foss and Smokey Adams are concerned, the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Step on it. Race to your grocers. Get the new Yukon Trail packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, at no extra cost, get cutout models of Sergeant Preston's Yukon Trail to build the very things you heard about in today's story and stories to come. Remember, your grocer now has them. You'll want the complete set of eight special, different, new Yukon Trail packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The swell taste in cereals shot from guns. Actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. On packages number one, two, three, and four, you get Sergeant Preston's dog sled and team, White Horse Jail where Bat Nelson escaped, the lumber camp and Dead Dutchman gold mining camp where Bat Nelson hid out, and many others. Every package is clearly numbered on the front. There's no waiting, nothing to send in, no extra cost. They're right on the big red and blue packages of Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. The original crisp, fresh, shot from gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. Get yours right away. They're at your grocer's now. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of alias Al Gibson. Alan Gifford had disappeared because he thought he was wanted for murder in the States. Actually, a private detective was trying to locate him to tell him that he was clear with the law. I undertook to help the detective find him and gradually uncovered a fiendishly clever murder plot. When I came face to face with the guilty party... He decided to make me his next victim. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat... And Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Remember, for delicious hot breakfasts, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. From Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>